Hello. Uh, let's uh, continue with the definition of uh, various indices. So this is Professor Umar Rao bringing you the lectures on electrical power quality under the e section program of VTU. So in my last lecture, uh, I had told you about the RMS voltage variation indices. So we set some thresholds and uh, when these thresholds are crossed, we record it and note the duration for which it is crossed. So now we will see how harmonics are benchmarked. So, you know, sampling is very important. I told you in my previous lecture also, we have monitors and uh, the recording is done every cycle or whatever duration we want. And uh, you all know how the harmonic is characterized by the total harmonic distortion, which we call as THD. So this THD gives the proportion or the RMS value of the harmonic components, all of them put together as a percentage of the fundamental. Uh, you have studied in chapter three and four, and uh, we see that there are thresholds for this based on IEEE and IEC standards. So for different voltage levels, you have different tolerance of the harmonics of voltage and current. And when it comes to harmonics, you have seen that the triple N harmonics, they're all of zero sequence and hence they all flow through the neutral, right? So we have to monitor the harmonic content in the three phases and also in the neutral. I can't afford to ignore the neutral. Clear? Now, there are many recording instruments for this. You have, they're called as spectrum analyzers and the power analyzers. Uh, so you have fantastic meters by fluke, which will directly give you the harmonic uh, content. Now, one difference you should realize between voltage variations and harmonics is voltage variations are short. So, for example, uh, let us say you start a huge motor, a 5000 HP motor is started. Then it draws a heavy starting current and momentarily the voltage dips. There is a sag. Then it will recover. Once the motor picks up speed, it will recover. Right? So, these faults which we discussed earlier, they're all short. -term. But harmonics, on the other hand, are caused by the very nature of the load. Okay. For example, supposing I have a couple of industries connected to a feeder. Right. Now these industries will be running their loads. So the harmonic content will depend on what is the load these feeders have. So we have discussed even in the first chapter, I have shown you so many here. Uh, uh, you know, real-time waveforms of how of uh, you know the current drawn by a laser printer or a CPU or a monitor by different types of lighting and so on. So these loads are there all the time. So unlike a voltage variation, I need not monitor the harmonic continuously. Okay. I need not monitor it continuously. I can do it at periodic intervals. So supposing I have three industries, there is no need for me to monitor them continuously because they'll have the same type of loads. I will monitor them periodically, maybe every half an hour or every uh, 15 minutes. Half an, hour, half an hour is good enough. Now what I find, you know, the harmonic suddenly becomes high between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Right? 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. it becomes high. So I am not... I'm not going to look at monitoring, you know, two, two, one, two, 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 three. No, around that time it becomes high. Then I look at the three industries and I say, okay, between two to four, which industry is connecting a load? Because, you know, when you see in process industries, there is a sequential 
process flow one after the other one after the other and there'll be a work in progress and build up of inventory of the process so it may not happen that all the machinery all the loads in the industry are run at the same time that that will not happen clear so okay i know between 2 to 4 there is some load which is causing a uh, heavy distortion then we identify which industry has switched on the load so what i am trying to tell is that a sag can occur any time due to so many reasons whereas harmonics which are predominantly because of the nature of the loads do not require a continuous monitoring so normally they are done in intervals of 15 to 30 minutes and you all know how thd is defined it is the rms value of all the harmonics as a percentage of the fundamental the same is for the current apart from this we also de define and sure you have done it in chapter 3 the tdd the distortion factor total distortion factor exclusively for currents because sometimes this only gives you an idea about the proportion of harmonic and fundamental but it does not tell you whether the that magnitude is high or low right i may have i may have 40% thd but the current may be around 5 amperes or 10 amperes which is negligible so the total distortion factor takes into account also the magnitude of the maximum current so if that is small if tdd is small even if the magnitude of the current is small we can ignore even though the harmonic content is high okay so that's how we do the harmonics now if we come to three phase the harmonic content in all the three phases need not be the same let us take an example see i i have a i'm a process industry let us say it's a printing press and i have a three phase drive huge drive so now this drive is designed to have a balanced operation so in this case the harmonic distortion in all the three phases will be the same okay but consider an industry so what what i have done in one of the phase i have connected some computing loads some computers desktop some printers etc and in other phase i have connected some uh, resistive load maybe heaters and in the third phase i have taken all my lighting and fans so you see here the nature of all the three are different the nature of all the three are different so the harmonic content the thd in the three phases can be different very much so in industries because different loads may be connected you may not connect three phase loads you may connect different types of single phase loads in the three phase system so due to these reasons uh, we have to evolve a method of characterizing uh, the index for harmonics in three phase systems so now let us say i count how many times it has crossed the threshold so let us say it has crossed the threshold in all the three phases then it then my count gets multiplied by 3 the cause may be one one single thing for example i have connected a um, a speed drive for a motor three phase motor so this speed drive is drawing harmonic currents and all of them are 7% which is above the permitted 5% so i will count it as three different phases 5 7 7 7 so my the event is only one equipment is only the asd speed drive automatic speed drive but my harmonic violation will get multiplied by 3 that is one thing we have to take care the second case i can average but here the problem is you think of the case i told you where in the point where in one phase i connect all computer loads so there my thd may be 15% and in the other one i connect some kind of a high uh, heating load where uh, the thd is just around uh, 6% 5% and other one is uh, purely a resistive load where the thd is around 1% so if i take the average i may get around 7% or 8% but with that i don't get the information that in one phase it is very high it is not to 15% okay so a very high distortion in one phase may be masked 
by lower distortions in the other phase if I take the average. So we cannot say which is correct, which what is the right thing to do. You have to decide. You have to decide based on the application and uh, where you are making the measurement and the kind of loads that are there. Okay. So what happens now? We have seen the indexes for power quality. So the utility and the end consumer, they will draw a contract. See, utility cannot guarantee you 100% reliability. Faults will occur, lightning, tornado, so many things will come on which the utility does not have control. And the uh, utility does not have control on when an industry will start a motor and so on. So they draw different contracts. The utility will draw different contracts. So who are the people involved in the contract? So the first one is the transmission provider, what we call as the transco. Okay. And then the local distributors, whom we call as discos or discoms, and uh, independent power producers, IPPs. So who are these IPPs? They are small private investors who have invested in a power plant, maybe a small solar plant, a small wind farm. Okay, or a small thermal plant, gas-based thermal plant. So they don't generate in huge quantities, 100 megawatts, 50 megawatts, smaller, smaller, right? So these are called as IPP, independent power producers. So the industry does a contract with the independent power producers. The utilities will draw a contract. And today, with a lot of renewable energy coming on the distribution side, uh, we have what are called as virtual power plants. What are these? See, I have 50 megawatts generation. You have 50 megawatts generation. She has 50 megawatts generation. We can't individually find buyers for it. So what a VPP, a virtual power plant will do is they will aggregate. They will aggregate all small producers and then they will do, do the trading and selling and distributing, etc. So there are special contracts for that. And then we have contract with energy markets trading. So the energy traders, they neither generate nor transmit nor distribute. They just buy and sell. They buy from one person and sell it to another. They're trading companies. And they might be a contract with the end user. So these are all the different uh, types of contracts which a utility will draw with the uh, different uh, entities in the system. So when you draw a contract for RMS uh, variations, what are all the issues you have to look into when you draw the agreement? We are all used to agreements, no? We have a, rent a rental agreement, we have an employee agreement, employer agreement, insurance agreements. So agreement is two way, the seller and the buyer both, right? So both have, have to comply by some agreement rules. So when it comes to RMS variations, what are all the key issues? The first is, how many interruptions can you expect in a year? Let us say, uh, we are located at a place where uh, there are a number of, uh, you know, weather uh, conditions which are bad in a year. So I have cyclones, I have heavy rains, etc. So the utility will tell, look, you expect 10 interruptions in a year because that is how the geography is. I have no control of it. Okay. And how many sags can be expected? Below what level? Expect at least four or five sags below 10%. That means interruption. So they can define it. Uh, or alternatively, the utility can promise you how many times you may cross the boundary of your curve. For example, you have a CDMA curve. So they may tell at least around 100 times in a year, it may go slightly outside the boundary or 50 times. So if that is not acceptable to you, you please strengthen your uh, internal power supply. And the means by which the end users can mitigate RMS variations. How oh, I have an RMS variation. Utility tells me you're going to have this many per year. How do I mitigate it? I have to put a UPS, right? Or I may have to put some, some other uh, equipment. I may have to put a DVR, a dynamic voltage restorer. I may have to put a stack form at my uh, input transformer. 
So these are all some of the ways by which we can mitigate. This is another key issue. And who should do it? Whether I should do it or the utility will do it for me. Right. And the utility should analyze the performance of the power delivery system. Why so many sacks are occurring? Why so many customers are uh, interrupted? Right. And it is the duty of the utility to reduce the number of faults within their control. See, sometimes a fault, faulty gripping can happen because of wrong protection thresholds. Wrong protection thresholds. So I, a relay may be in, inappropriately set or the load profile may have changed but I don't, I have forgotten to set my uh, relay settings. I have not changed my relay settings because of which a wrong tripping can occur. So all these things, the utility has to take care. And maintenance is a very important aspect which utility has to pay attention to, right? Regular maintenance of the equipment is necessary. Now, these are the agreements the utility will have to look into when it draws the contract and promises about RMS variations. What about harmonics? So very early on, we have seen that harmonics is a problem mostly created by the loads, the kind of loads we have, nonlinear loads, computing loads, uh, automatic speed drives, uh, lighting loads, SMPS, chargers, so many, so many different kinds of loads. These are all sources of uh, harmonics. Okay, so these may permanently damage the equipment or equipment may maloperate. And uh, IEEE uh, 519 1992 uh, standards tell you about what are the harmonic levels to be maintained. So, when it comes to harmonics, there are some key issues which must be looked into before drawing a contract. So, what are these? First is, how do I define the PCC? The utility has to very clearly define the PCC. And what is the allowable deviation of harmonics at the PCC? So this will depend on the standards. As I told you, IEEE 519992 standard is very popularly used for harmonic distortions. And the utility might have installed some filters and other equipment. Who will maintain it? They have to maintain it. Periodic cleaning, monitoring, etc. For permanently installed devices, your capacitor banks, your filters, your reactors, and all these equipment have to be monitored. What are all the responsibilities the utility has to pay? First, they have to keep the system out of resonance. See, in the system, I have capacitors. Capacitors are there in filters. I have to power factor improvement capacitors. And we have inductances, the transmission line inductance, the distribution line inductance, the motor winding inductance, transformer winding inductance. And we do have resistances. So we have, if I take the system circuit, we have a number of series and parallel resonant frequencies. These are not uniform. They depend on the network and the values, the network impedances. Now, the utility should see that these harmonic resonant, these frequencies do not coincide with a resonant frequency. For example, supposing I'm installing a power factor capacitor bank for power factor improvement. Clear? And at that point, I have, there is a transformer. And uh, let us say the transformer uh, and, uh, and the capacitor together form an RLC circuit and the resonant frequency is 250 hertz. Clear? 250 hertz is fifth harmonic. Now, when I connect a load, when I connect a load, fifth harmonic currents are very common in many loads. And so they will get amplified because of this resonance. And the outcome would be my capacitor will fail. So what should, what, what should the utility do? The utility should properly analyze the system and see that the I must change the value of capacitor. That's all. The only thing is change the value of the capacitor 
so that the resonant frequency is not 250 hertz maybe it may be 210 hertz or 280 290 hertz now 210 and 290 hertz don't occur they don't they are not any uh, integer multiple of 50 hertz i'm talking of the indian system so the harmonic resonance harmonic resonance will not occur so this is the duty of the utility utility's responsibility to see that they design and uh, the various equipment so that resonance doesn't occur at harmonic frequencies. The second uh, important responsibility of the utility is to keep track of the record, the records of the loads being connected. Okay, I have a feeder, fine. One industry is connected, already there is some load, another new industry comes up. This industry may have some you know, induction furnaces, they may have some building equipment, etc. The other loads which are already there may get affected. Okay, or this industry, uh, the, I have a transformer which will, um, you know, take the load of this industry, but my relay I have set to the old loads. Relay I have set to the old loads. So what will happen now the new load when I connect, even though the transformer is capable of taking the load, the relay will trip because I have forgotten to set the relay, change the relay setting. Clear. So a lot of things can happen when you connect loads arbitrarily. So it is the duty of the utility to keep record of the new loads and see that any changes which have to be incorporated are done. And every time a new load is connected, detailed analysis has to be done by the utility. What is the impact of this load on my existing system? What extra problem can it cause okay and the utility the fourth important responsibility is educate the end user about the options okay look i am giving you this supply this is okay as per standard but your equipment is very sensitive so you please have a ups only for this equipment so i i the utility has to educate the consumer the end user if the service provided by the utility is not good enough for the sensitive equipment of the consumer. As I told you, utility cannot guarantee you 100%. So if your equipment cannot withstand even a small deviation, it is the responsibility of the end consumer to install mitigating equipment. Next, we have the utility to monitor periodically all the permanently installed devices in the system. This is also another very important responsibility. And what are the mi mitigation costs? See, you should tell the co consumer, this is the cost involved. It is up to the consumer whether to, you know, mitigate the power quality issue or take a risk and wait for the equipment to fail. Right. And they also have to take a decision on who should bear the cost. I have a feeder, I have three industries. Somebody is corrupting at the PCC, who will pay for it? Is it just the industry whose load is responsible for the distortion? Or should the other industries also bear the cost? Should the utility also bear the cost? So all these issues have to be uh, discussed. These are all the duties of the utility. Okay, thank you.